All right, here we go. Montana 300, welcome back. Yes, thanks for having me, man. Of course, man. This is our fourth time. Yes. Fourth time, but it's been some years. It's been like five years. Yeah, two Since our last one, man. Yeah. A lot has happened since last time. That's facts. By the way, I'm happy that you're you're well right now because you had a really bad case of COVID from what I yeah, understand. Yeah, appreciate that, man. I was, had COVID and pneumonia at the same time. Oh, wow. So definitely appreciate you, uh, you know, reaching out and checking up on me and stuff, man. Yeah, you know, I DM'd you, made sure you're okay. You hit me back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's dangerous lot, out here. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you're okay, man. Shit, me too, man. How bad was it? Man, I was I was bad, man. I, I was yeah, taking I take a shower, take a hot shower, ch- trying to sweat, sweat it out. I get out the shower, lay on the f- floor for like 30 minutes. Uh, finally get the strength to get up, type stuff. I just I just slept a lot, man. I, um, kept a lot of fluids, and it's like every time I would wake up, it's like I'd be ready to just you know take some medicine, mucinex, whatever. And uh, go back, to, go right back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? So it seemed like I slept for like a week straight, mm. and I don't even know how I was able to able to sleep this much. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was taking Nyquil, but it's like my body was just like okay with the sleep, I guess. You know what I'm saying? So okay, so you you didn't end up in the hospital or anything else? Like no, that. I mean I went there. That's how I found out. Okay, you got tested. Yeah, but you yeah, didn't exactly. stay there. No, 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 no I didn't stay okay. there. Yeah. So it was, it was he's on his deathbed and blah 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 and all this. He's not even not make it. I'm looking like. Uh, I don't know, but um, yeah. Then it, it was the crazy part was I seen people like, cause you know I don't I'm uh, against taking the vaccine, you know, putting it in my blood or whatever. So it was like a lot of people on the internet that was like happy I had COVID. Like it, I saw people like saying like, "Hey, bring up them posts where he was, see if he think is if he think COVID is fake now." And I'm like, hmm. "Where did I say COVID was fake?" You know what I'm saying? Like it was, I just never seen people happy to see somebody sick you know what i'm saying so um yeah it's just it's crazy yeah i mean a lot a lot of this stuff is really like polarizing or people are mm-hmm. like on opposite sides right right want right. to take it or don't want to take it it's ultimately your, your choice yeah, whether yeah. you want to do it but like you get this almost hatred of both sides mm-hmm. and people trying to prove their point yeah. and so forth and, and you know some people when they feel like they've committed already it's like oh i gotta stand up for this side like yeah I got to make myself feel right. You know what I'm saying? Even yep. though I, I know it's got to be some people out there that's like, man, I should have never took it. Or I, should have taken I hope it. I took it. Yeah, or even that. Yeah. Or um, or even just lying. Oh, no, I didn't. Y'all didn't take I didn't take it either. Well, you know damn what you took. You know what I'm right. saying? Stuff like that. <laughs> How are you yeah. in this restaurant right now? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you, man. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, me too, man. I'm Appreciate glad it. you're okay. I'm glad you're okay. Number one, uh, congrats on the new album. Thank uh, you, Rap God. I want to talk about that. Yes, sir. At the yes, end, sir. man, because I've been bumping that all day, man. That's what's up, man. Great Appreciate project. That, man. You know, you got 833 songs on there. <laughs> 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 Longest yeah, album ever. It's my hat on the red. 25 songs. 25 songs. songs. I'm joking. Yeah. yeah. Last solo album, too. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, yeah. I want to get back in your story again, man. It's been a while. I feel like a lot of people need to get reintroduced to, okay, to who okay. you are on Vlad TV. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so you grew up in Peoria? Um, I grew up half of my life in Chicago, and then... I got to uh, Peoria like in sixth grade, and then I was back and forth from Chicago Peoria. Then high school, mm-hmm. I stayed in uh, Peoria four years in high school, and that's really why I like start hustling. You know what I'm saying? I met like some of my friends that I was dealing with in the streets. Mm-hmm. So, and I would go get my product and stuff back home in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I would go back to Chicago, I'm dealing with dudes like way older than me, but you know I got my gun and you know certain stuff like that. So I wasn't. Dealing with the kids I grew up in Chicago on the street shit. I was dealing with guys way older than me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So um, all the little, the little Dirks and the Keefs and you know her like I'm older than them. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't see me around Chicago because you know when I was in high school they was in middle school. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And when I was hustling in the streets, y'all was probably still in middle school. You know, or high school. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um. Certain things like that, but I would, you know, be back and forth so much on the highway, like two, three times a week, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's how I plan on, like, I'm investing in my music. Like, I'm making a name, I'm I'm, I'm, um, I'm getting in the studio, you know, shooting videos, little things like that. So um, a lot of people in Peoria knew who I was from just getting money. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, he do music too, he can rap, you know? So it's like, when I would go home to, to my old projects in Chicago, they'd be like, man, where you been? Uh, Peoria, blah, blah, blah. He's like, man, I heard that song. So I'm like, okay, it's kind of spreading into Chicago a little bit too, you know, and things like that. But um, I remember just uh, one time I came to pick up some stuff from Chicago and 
the guy, he had somebody else meet me, you know, his cousin. Uh, you know, I guess he seen a gun in my lap and I kind of had it hidden, like under my hoodie a little bit, but I guess he seen the handle. And when we got out of there, when he got out the car, his uh, cousin texted me like, hey, hey, nephew, you don't, you know, you don't got to come like that. You know, like, we good, you know, you safe, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm in Chicago. Like, this, this is not the only place I'm stopping at. You know what I'm saying? I got family, all my family in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? I, I stopped there. I go stop and get gyros, you know, on 35th and all type of stuff like that. And even then, I would move around and I'd have my gun with me and I would be by myself because I wasn't known as a rapper in Chicago. And I would see people kind of look, you know, like, yeah, who who is this dude? Like he looked like he's somebody, but I don't so much dress like another Chicago nigga. Like this nigga dressing like he's, you know, somebody else or you know from somewhere else, you know. And um, and that's how I was too. Like even in Peoria, like I didn't dress like nobody. People from Peoria didn't dress like me. I just had my own thing. And then people be like, oh, so he popular, he make money. Let's start trying to dress like him. Well, let's start trying to do what he do. You know what I'm saying? Like the rope dreads with the bandana, like that was me. I was the first rapper with, with that. You know what I'm saying? And things like that. And I seen other rappers doing it afterwards, but I never felt like, oh, he's biting my stuff, blah, 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 blah. I'm the first nigga that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, people watch me, people see me, you know, so take from me, learn from me. You know, that's all cool. You know, so, you know, a, um, a sign of just, you know, flattery or whatever, stuff like that. So it's like, um, I didn't mind that. You know, sometimes I hear like uh, the line that I made over uh, over and over to um, keep the 30 on me like I'm Stephen Curry. You know what I'm saying? It's like I heard that a million times afterwards, but I never been mad about it. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. And it's like, um, so yeah, just back and forth from Chicago and Peoria, I was, you know, known here and there. And it's just some people just like, dang, this nigga come out rapping. Boom, boom, Chirac, blah, 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 blah. You know, and it's like, he applying pressure. He getting millions of views too and blah, 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 blah. He don't got no deal and how's he getting these millions and it's like, so the hate comes and I ain't never seen this nigga. Ooh, 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 yeah, you, you're you not supposed to see me when I was coming in out of Chicago and doing things like, I wasn't standing on the block in the corner and you know what I'm saying, things like that. Like I was handling business with niggas way older than me. You know what I'm saying? And um, risky shit too. Like for years, no license, no insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like not giving a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And I just was living on the edge but it's like I'm just getting to the money. So I think a, the, a lot of the money that I seen in the streets before I blew up with rapping helped me be able to stand firm with like not signing a deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um and standing on my own, I seen how fast money can come and go. I seen how people can have a good year, then have a two bad years behind. It's like, damn, what the f happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I I didn't see it, so I learned the value of money and what's really important in life. You know what I'm saying? And um a lot of people don't know that you know the ultimate wealth is freedom. You know, that's what life is about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And usually when somebody gives you money, it's like, oh, I need something in return. Or I need something from you. And it's usually some type of control, you know, over you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, you know, you live and you learn. So, you know, everybody's story doesn't go the same. And, you know, that's how mine went, basically. Well, both your parents had uh, substance abuse issues. Right. Um, How rough was that growing up in that type of environment? Um, I guess your dad it was alcohol. Yeah, he was alcohol, but his wasn't. He wasn't a heavy alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? It, his was more like he would only drink like on the weekends. Okay, that's not bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So he always kept a job. You know, neither one of my parents ever made me feel like I wasn't loved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but my mom, her stuff was heavy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, uh, at the end of the day, it's like um, I was taught growing up too. Like no matter how hard you got it, it's always somebody out there that has it ten times harder than you. So you know. My mom would kind of point out stuff like that. Like when I would complain to her, you know, I got into a fight with my friend. You know, I'm in third grade. I'm, I'm fight. I got into a fight with my friend because he said your mom was a crackhead and blah blah blah. And she would just know all the information about everybody else's mom. Well, his mom would turn the tricks and ooh, 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 sucking dick and blah 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 and did this. And I'm like, oh yeah, oh, okay. Well, you know, and she's like, you know, if you want to, you know. And then she would also explain to me like, um. I remember like sometimes she would make money and she would do my mom a hustler. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she would do stuff like it'd be like some GDs in front of the building. They have a big truck on some big rims. And I'd be playing at the park with my friends and I look over and, and then I see her like she got a bucket and, you know, scrub things. She washing their car for them. You know what I'm saying? And I was so embarrassed by it. My friends didn't say nothing to me, but they see it just like I see it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'd be mad. I'm like, man, like, I can't wait to, you know, tell her about this, you know, woo woo. And I see her later on. And it wouldn't go how I expected it to go because she would be like, well, would you rather have me doing this and doing that and blah, 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 like such and such and the mama, okay then, like, let me do it. I got to make money, blah, 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 you know? 
And I would see her do stuff like go to grocery stores for old ladies. You know what I'm saying? She'd come back with all the bags, steal a whole cart from the grocery store and bring it back to the projects. You know, and I'd be looking like, you know, but she hustled. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people respected my mom. Like, she got a mouthpiece. She know how to talk. All the new lingo, she would be up on it before we would be on it. You know what I'm saying? So she'd get to talking funny. I'm like, what the? To this day. How she know this? Ooh, what is what is this? What is she talking about? That was kind of cool. And then next thing you know, I hear the, the world talking about it. So she real street smart. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, she'd been surviving the streets basically like since she was nine years old. You know what I'm saying? But um, I used to see drug dealers like tell me sometimes, like look at me sometimes. I guess I don't know how to look on my face or something. But they'll come and tell me like, man, your mama, she going she gonna to be all right. You know what I'm saying? She going to be. And I just looked at everybody like. Y'all probably sell drugs. You might have sold something to my mama. Maybe you ain't the one that did. But it's like, to me, it's like, all you niggas is guilty. You know what I'm saying? Like, and in the Chirac song, when I say, I remember way back when we was broke, we was crying mama high as hell. To us, she was a loving mother. But to other motherfuckers, she was clientele. And I remember begging her to stop. And every single night when I told her that, I'm going to get big and buy a bunch of guns and kill every nigga that didn't sold her crack. And that mm. was really a thought and a goal of mine as a kid. Like... I don't know where I'm going to get guns from or how people go about getting guns, but I know I'm going to be able to find out how to get some when I'm big. You know, and I just had this vision in my head of killing a whole lot of, you know, drug dealers that was in my projects. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even thought about making it into a movie almost, you know what I'm saying, a movie script, but it was like, this was like the 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 glorified, a glorified goal in my head. Not like, oh, to get to the NBA one day. It's like, no, I want to do this to them. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, but later on, you started selling drugs yourself. Yeah, and I started selling, selling pounds to, of weed. Okay, do you ever I do, sell the pounds of weed. No, I never sold you never crack cocaine. cocaine. No, or no. Nothing. Okay, and that's the reason why. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I got I got raps okay. about that too. Got you it. know, yeah, I got raps about that too. You know, um, I don't know. I forgot. Um, you know, just the thought of my mother or whatever. What I say? Um, I forgot it, but it's on the song uh, "Heat Stroke." You know, but I'm t saying why I never sold crack because of my mom and stuff like that. Like, I seen the effect that it had on families, you know what I'm saying, and uh, the people, you know what I'm saying? Um, just my mom seeing her come in is like, it looked like she's possessed, like she's not in her right mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like she's making eye contact with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that sense is like, damn, when I would see that, it's like, that's not my mom, you know? And then when the high would go down and she would sober up, it's like, okay, I got a little bit happier. Like, okay, now she's seeming like the woman I know type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, here's the lyric, I think. Mm -hmm. I was getting money way before rap. I was hustling, moving drill packs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I made a decision. I lost all my mother's conditions while I never sold crack. Yeah, I made a decision based off of my mother's conditions while I never sold crack. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, good fun. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's, that's it. And it's like, and then as I got older, I caught on to the... Um, the pattern, like, oh, it's the heaviest at the first of the month when she get her check. So I, it didn't dawn on me that when she would get her check at first of the month, and it's like the daytime would be so much fun. Like, oh, we went grocery shopping. Oh, she got a new outfit. She got to eat a new outfit. Oh, she got us a toy. It's happy, happy, happy. But but that same night, and it didn't dawn on me that this is the pattern. The same night, it's like. Oh, I'm a kid. I'm I'm crying. I'm sitting on the on, on outside the bathroom door, banging my head on the back of the door because she's in the inside of the bathroom getting high. You know what I'm saying? And she would try to go in. Like sometimes I might be in the back room. It's like she got company. They go in the back. You know. So like, yeah, why I'm going to peek my head out here and be nosy or want to come to the refrigerator for some? You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, okay, I'm seeing four motherfuckers in here getting high. You know what I'm saying? So when I start complaining, next thing you know. The, uh, the the company left and she's in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, then I'd be banging on the bathroom, cry myself to sleep type stuff like that. Literally like talking to God because this is what we are taught, you know, as kids. Like, oh, this, when you, this God is who you talk to when you want something real bad that you can't get or you can't get it done on your own. You know, like I talk to God so much. Um, the song that I got on my album called Mama, you know what I'm saying? I say, I've been praying since I was eight for you. Never, ever lost faith in you. Superwoman, you're capable. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, so just just certain things like that. And I think later on in life, it helped me realize too that like prayer is good, but prayer is really for self. Yeah. You know, like your prayer can never change the reality of somebody outside of your body. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's I almost agree. like a way to keep yourself calm or you're feeding yourself good thoughts or you should be feeding yourself good thoughts, you know? 
Like, no matter how hard I stare at this glass across the room, I can never pray so hard that it gets up and floats <laughs> over to me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Things like that. But um, I, I, I fuck with prayer, though. Yeah, man, listen, I have crack addicts in my family, and um, I've, I've heard some horror stories that, that I can't even get into. Right. You know what I mean? So I know there's a lot of stories that you're not going to share on camera. That yeah, you I got went, some. You went through, and, and that's that's the way it should be, man. But, um, you know, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Is she clean now? It's all good. She be on and off here and yeah. there. You that, know what I'm saying? That's usually so, how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once like, you um, hit your, you know, 40s, her, 50s. Her chapters, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. All right, so... I guess at, at 15, you started rapping? Yeah. And uh, your dad gave you a book about Emmett Till. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I, I remember I, I interviewed Bill Duke, mm-hmm. the actor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what You know, and um, he remembers as a kid getting the news about Emmett Till. Mm. He's that old. Right. That's crazy. And, um, you know, just the effect of, of what it had on, on the world. Right. Really, the fact that you had this mother that was had enough courage to have an open casket funeral with her son looking like that mm-hmm. to have everyone take everyone and everyone see. take pictures right. you know what i'm saying like right. you have kids can you mm-hmm. imagine having an open casket funeral for something like that like like it, it's a it's a different level no, of strength you know what i mean to 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 do but she understood what it's going right, to right 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 you know symbolize for years to come so so that was the book that kind of Started to change things for you? Um, I think it did, but unknowingly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and I want I thank my dad really for that because I think um I forgot which one. I know I don't know what order it was, but people were still buying cassette tapes at the time. Like it was like the last of people, you know, cassette tapes were still in. And my dad used to always buy these rap albums. He had a case full of them. And I was like, you know, I want to start collecting my own, you know, and getting more into music and rap. And these two tapes, he had his own, but I wanted my own. And I don't know what order it was, but it was um, Juvenile, 400 Degrees, and it was DMX, uh, Is Dark and Hell is Hot. And um, I want to say DMX album was first. Uh, but anyway, he had me read his Emmett Till book first. I had to finish the Emmett Till book in order for him to buy me the tape. So I'm like, all right, bet. You know, and I had to report to him after every chapter what I read, you know. And I hope a lot of um, parents start doing this stuff with their kids. You know, it's, it'd be uh, real helpful, you know, for them make them report to you after every chapter and make them read a book if they want a pair of shoes and things like that. And it teaches them a lesson of, you know, being able to work for what you want in life. You know what I'm saying? It goes a far away. And, um, and I think the other book was uh, Sounder with the black kid with the dog. Uh, and um, I had to do those uh, books, but they definitely, and the next one was a uh, Malcolm X book. And um, I forgot what album that was, but um, oh, I was the Rough Riders an- uh, album, they little joint album with the whole group. Yep. Uh, it was that. So um, I had to do that, and I had to read that, and that kind of like uh, I never heard of Emmett Till ever in my life until then, you know. So um, I'm going back and forth to him, explaining them what I read, and it's like I'm mind blown by this. Like, man, this happened, and this, and that's not dining on me. Like he already knows about all of this. You know what I'm saying? So as a kid, it's like, man, you know. And um, yeah, it, it just was crazy, but it, it, I think it definitely helped me and uh, kind of birthed something in me as far as the reading and the music, you know what I'm saying? And just those two clashing and the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Because um, the best rappers are very knowledgeable, you know what I'm saying? They, and, and they're dealing with words. So it's like, you should know a lot about English, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what you're actually uh, using as a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And by the time you get to high school, is that when you started like rapping and putting out mixtapes on your own and so forth? Uh, yeah. The first mixtape I put out was like at the end of my senior year. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but I was rapping, like getting in little home studios and stuff uh, throughout high school, like mostly like my sophomore, my junior year, senior year, stuff like that. But um, I kind of got real serious right at the end of high school because um, should I have money to really support it. You know, big money now. You know what I'm saying? So you were hustling in high school? Yeah, I started at 17. Yeah, my junior year. Okay. What well, what made you start hustling your junior year? I remember I, I had uh, two of my friends, well, two, two dudes I was cool with. I started seeing them coming to school and I'm like, damn, they like they fresher than normal. You know what I'm saying? 
So I'm looking. I think it's like two kind of guys in this world. Like you see guys or kids, whatever you want to say, that see somebody fresh and it's like either, damn, that, that you know, I, I want to be like that or get like them or, you know, or who the fuck they think they is. Or like, who the fuck these niggas think they is. You got them type of niggas. So don't be the who the fuck these niggas think they is type of guy if, if that's you out there. But anyway, you know, and I hollered at one of them because I had class with him. And I told him, like, you know, like to put me on, you know, like I'm trying to, ooh. And he's like, no, nah, man, just stick to the sports shit because I was real good at football, basketball, and track. So he was like, like this ain't, and I'm like, no, nah, like I'm really, like, I, I can't be sitting around waiting uh, till my birthday to come for my dad or somebody to buy me an outfit. And then it's like, the rest is just nothing. Like I'm just wearing old clothes basically, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, uh, so finally he ended up giving me like a half ounce, you know, it was like just, you don't owe me, just come back and spend with me, you know? So half hour's not really much, but it's something, you know what I'm saying? And like to this day, like everything that you see today, like I I turned it that into, you know, every all the support and you know what you see today, you know what I'm saying? And and like even years after that, he like, man, I didn't gave niggas pounds, you know, multiple pounds, QP, half pound, all type of stuff. And you the only one that really, you know, made what I gave you count. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you were actually, you know, good at track and football. Mm -hmm. And I guess you got a, a scholarship to college. Yeah. But you said something interesting in this one interview, which, mm -hmm. which kind of hit close to home. You said, uh, you know, I remember going to, uh, to college on a track and field scholarship, and I wasn't into it. I was just good at it. I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I could be the best track and field athlete or the fastest NFL player. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that kind of hit close to me because I, I remember – you know, I spent years making beats. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I'm like, I'm never going to be Dr. Dre. Right. I'm never going to be DJ Premier. I'm never going to be Timberland. Like, right. I just, I, I'm good, but I'll never be great. Right. So I just completely stopped And it. you wanted to be great. I wanted to be right, great. Exactly, exactly. And then once I started DJing, I became great at DJing. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Then the interviews came. I was great at doing interviews. Mm -hmm. But I remember there's, it's a very interesting distinction of sticking with something just because you're good and not getting a chance to do what you're actually great at. Right, right, right. You know, right. which I think was right. what you went through mm -hmm. in a way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, you know, it's just something that you, you, when you feel strongly about something, you know, you usually stand firm on it, you know? And it's like, um, you know when things, when, you're, when your heart is not in it, even just like relationships or certain things like that, when you're crazy about a girl or, you know what I'm saying, whatever, like you really have to be crazy about something. That's how you know it's like, yeah, this is mm -hmm. the one I want to, you know, put my foot on the gas with. Well, uh, in 2008, uh, you and Tally, you guys formed 300? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm trying to figure out, so in 2008, mm -hmm. you got, you know, you had already released a, a mixtape, like mm -hmm. right around that time? I released a couple of mixtapes by the end. Yeah. Okay. But then you fast forward to 2014, six years later, that's when you put out Curse with a Blessing? Yeah. And what was happening in those six years in between? <laughs> <laughs> Man. Um... <laughs> Everything, huh? Man, yeah, it's a lot of things, man. I was, we beefed with people. I've been blamed for murders, all type of stuff. Um, I dropped out of school, um, still hustling. I had a son, 2008. Um, I had my second son, 2012. Um, 2013 was like the worst year of my life. Why is that? Um, I had, uh, I was facing like nine years in jail. For what? Uh, I got pulled over with pounds in a car, but the car wasn't in my name. And um, I ended up beating that case. Um, I also, it also revoked the probation I was already on from a previous gun case I had. And um, so I had to go do 90 days in jail for that. Um, and it just was like a super bad year from death. You know, my grandfather died, you know, uh, my, my sister's uh, baby father, who I was real close with, he died. You know, R.P. to Sonny. Um, I speak about him on my song, Know My Pain. You know, my niece, um, they had a child together. That's my niece. I'm real close with her. Um, yeah, so it, it just was a, 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 a big year full of um, bad things. You know what I'm saying? And um, even financially, like, I was so hot that I couldn't hustle or move around. It just was like, I got to sit my ass still. You know, I go to the gas station. I look, it's a... Car that's feds license plates on, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, I get the fuck get out of here. You know, I can't really move around. You know what I'm saying at all. You know, so I just had to, you know, be still and you know, uh, work with the bare minimum. You know what I'm saying? And um, while still trying to make it as a rapper, you know what I'm saying? 
And uh, that was hard because it cost to really, you know, shoot videos and, you know, studio time, all that type of stuff. And your image, too. You know what I'm saying? Things that you got on and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm used to having money and just, just be like, to be for, to force myself to sit down. Because some people don't know how to sit down still. They You still want to be sneaky and tiptoe around. Like, bro, you know, like timing is everything, you know. But, um, yeah, so all of that went on. And... um. I remember getting on World Star for the first time. I had a song called Air Jordan, and it was like that was big because I've been trying so for years to get on there, you know. And they never, oh, you you gotta have forty thousand views to get on here. Oh, now, but then when I finally get it, two years, you gotta have eighty thousand views here and now. And it's yeah. like, oh, my. so I dropped the video, and like in the first twenty four hours, it had like ten thousand views, which was a lot at the time. And then somebody was like, man, World Star got your video, and I'm like, shit, I'm finna go do forty five days in jail, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that was good news for me in jail, you know what I'm saying? But um. You know, I got out and, and I had made Holy Ghost while I was in jail in 2013. I'm like, man, I can't wait to rap this and shoot this. And I ended up, I didn't shoot that until like the summer of 2014 after Chirac had dropped and stuff like that. But yeah, Chirac is the one that blew me up. And the fact that I kind of really went through, when I made Chirac, I was in another space that I never been in making any other song. And it was just like rage and frustration all off of based off of 2013. and how hard I've been grinding and I just, I can't get a deal. I can't get, you know, but it's just things not paying off. And it was like, I'm seeing this Chicago drill stuff blow up where people like aren't lyrical. You know what I'm saying? Like this isn't lyrical music and people are eating this up, you know? So I'm like, maybe if I just dumb my music down and every little four or six line, I hit them with a, you know, a, um, a mind blowing metaphor, you know what I'm saying? it'll still keep me ahead of them and make me different. You know what I'm saying? So I started doing that and I started making some little moves and some, some little waves. But then when I when I started decided, like I'm going back to myself, but uh, you know, where, where I don't mind back to back to back bars was like making me untouchable, like things that people, can, other rappers can't do. It's like, that's why I said in the beginning of Chirac, like I'm done holding back. Like I was just super frustrated and just, uh, just full of rage, you know, and I did that and, and it changed my life forever. Right, because in 2012, that's when Chief Keef blew up. Yeah. And that set off a whole... That bought all eyes on Chicago. Yeah, I mean, it set off a chain of events. It's like, what else y'all got? Who yeah, else y'all got? To this yeah. day, yep, 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 it's yep. still a hip-hop hotspot because really before Chief Keef, Chicago had like a drought in terms of hot rappers. Exactly. Not Especially to say for that the youth because it was yeah, like... Yeah, right. You, know, you got Twister who was exactly, older exactly, by that exactly, time. Exactly, exactly, you know, exactly. Or, or, you know... Um, who did uh, like Crucial Conflict. Like, you know, I mean, these are all yep, older yep, yep, older yep. rappers. And and really, Chief Keef came in, I mean, not only with blowing up Chicago, but also the whole drill thing kind of started going everywhere. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn drill, UK yep, drill. New York drill, yeah. Yep, you know, yep. and, and then everyone around him started to get deals and yep. blow up and that's everything. That's facts, that's facts. Yeah, but, you, but you're right. You didn't really go that route. Mm-hmm. You didn't try to go for those types of drill mm-hmm. lyrics or whatever. Yeah, you yeah, try yeah. to get more lyrical. Right. And what you're doing and kind of stayed in your whole lane to this day. Right. That's facts. And I remember uh, 2015, you showed up on Empire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that was a nice look. Yeah, that was fun, man. That was cool. <laughs> what do you think of, uh, you think Jesse, Jesse Smollett's going to get a lot of time? Man, that's funny. He, I think March, he's supposed to get sentenced. He's, yeah, I just I just read that too, that March. It, it's no did telling you, with that. Did you meet him when you were, uh, when you were No, I didn't, I didn't meet him. No, really. um, the, the scenes that I was doing was the jail scenes. He oh, yeah, in right. jail. Yeah, so... Yeah, um, right. <laughs> But I met uh, in real life. He'll be fun yeah, to go to jail. <laughs> Terrence Howard and uh, Chris Rock and uh, Petey Pablo. That was funny too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, he yeah. was on that they, too. They were that. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, ain't no telling where that's where that's gonna go. But I feel like, you know, the what is it, LBGT? You LBGTQ, know, thing yeah. like it's like I wouldn't be surprised if like nothing happens to him. I don't know, man. He was found guilty. But then again, uh, I mean, that type of crime doesn't usually have prison time associated with it. But then again, he also pushed it more than anyone else should have pushed it. You know, right, right. if he had just said, you're right, I lied, I'm sorry. Right. But he took it to court. He got on the stand. Right, he kept right. lying. He right, more, right. you know, accused the police department right. of setting him up. Like, right. <laughs> you know, and it turned out that him and those Nigerian dudes, or one of the Nigerian dudes were actually Messing around with each other. Oh, I didn't even know, know that part. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah they went to a bathhouse together and they had a whole relationship somewhat. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about that. But yeah, yeah. I think everybody's going to be tuned in or yeah, at least waiting absolutely. to see you know, what goes on. 
2016, you dropped uh, Fire in the Church. Mm-hmm. Um, I had Kevin Gates on it. Yeah. And uh, that actually charted 95 on the Billboard charts. Uh, yeah, yeah. How did that feel? That felt great. Um, I think because um, a lot of stuff I didn't get to, I didn't expect just I'm staying independent. I'm, you know, I'm kind of like in the, my own little, you know, world really. Like I'm not really in the same, you know, it's like a whole nother, it's like a second industry to to me really. You know what I'm saying? Like people be asking me questions in interviews like, so how's it an industry? And it's like, I don't really consider myself being in the industry. I, you know, I know I'm known by the industry and, you know, I have the ability to sign over there, but it's like, I kind of almost don't mind being separated away from it. You know what I'm saying? In a sense, just because I don't have the machine, a, a machine behind me pushing me and working me like mm-hmm. everybody else, you know? Um, but yeah, um, it felt good, man. You know, just like it had dropped and I was in the middle of shooting a video. It was like 11 at night or something. And I look and they just showed me, it's like, wow. It was like, oh, it's up to number two on number two hip hop album on iTunes. And I'm like, so I look and I see Drake number one and Kevin Gates was number three. <laughs> you know, so I'm just like, like I, I couldn't believe it. You know, it's like, like I didn't expect none of this, none of that. You know, I didn't expect to get on a billboard at all, you know, any any of that. And um, so I'm like, damn, you know, I kind of got to shake myself back into reality and go finish shooting a video. But I was I was happy. It was a good day for me. And um, to that's why I set the date for my future albums to come out May 20th every year because that day was so important to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, because that's when you charted? It was a big, yeah, that was when. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm in the industry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I deal with industry people now for the last 20 years. And, and I do know this, that, you know, if you hit the charts independently like that, mm-hmm. That's when a lot of ears perk up. That's when what? A lot of ears perk up in oh, terms okay, of okay, the labels. Yeah. Right, right, right. Got you, got you. So, did a lot of calls start to come from the labels in terms yeah, of yeah, potential yeah. deals at yeah. that point? Yeah. Right. Um, That's what I thought. But actually, um, even before then, it was happening like crazy. Like, probably the most in 2015. Hmm. Yeah. And um, it was people like Universal was like, man, we've been watching you for years. And I'm like, and I'm just now hearing from you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. literally told me, you know. And then, like, 300 Entertainment, they was the first label to reach out to me. And they was like, you know, we want to manage you. Like, they like the way you was moving, we thought you had a deal already. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, things like that. And I just, you know, watched every kind of everybody and just, you know, kept my distance because a lot of people get things confused with, they think somebody is offering you money that's enough to change your life. They think that means like love, like oh this man changed my life, like and you get it confused with love, like so say that was a crumb to me, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, also was, a loan, They're not right? Exactly. Giving, and not a write off, you, you know money. what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, but it's being taken that way, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, oh you just did that for me, you know I can give you a sprite for free, I'll take care of your sprite. Like, oh that's love, bro. And it's like that. Oh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know five hundred thousand. Oh that's love, you know like this. This white man changed my life. He did more for me than anybody ever. <laughs> goddamn, I'll do whatever he asked me to. I will shoot at you if he asked me to. You know what I'm saying? Certain things like that. And um, that's how a lot of people move, you know. And um, so I just, one thing that stuck with me, I don't think I ever said this in an interview before, but I remember being young, and that's like the first time I recall hearing the word independent. And I think Snoop was somewhere probably out in L.A. hooping, and it was like a celebrity game or something like that. And he and he was happy. He was hooping and they was like they interviewed and they's like, what would you advice would you give any any upcoming artist that's you know trying to follow in your footsteps? And his smile went away so fast. He was like, man, just stay independent. And he said that, and I didn't know what the hell independent meant. Yeah. But the fact of you, you know, you read body language and I just seen the smile go away and it's like it's so much more behind that. But he said, I'ma just say, like to sum it all up, like yeah. the most important thing, is just stay independent. And that stuck with me always in life. Yeah. You know, like what what has he seen on the outside? Like if, if somebody's in this house that you've never been in and they tell you, they come out and say, just all I tell you is don't go in there. <laughs> right. I'm gonna go in there and see what happens. Yeah. I, I mean, don't think that happened to me. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I and I feel you. Listen, it's a balancing act. Uh, Vlad TV is totally independent. Mm-hmm. I'm one hundred percent owner. I've never taken investments, I've never taken partners. That's what's up, absolutely. Um, man. and and in the long term, that has worked out so well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you look at really anything, it's, it's always like a balancing act because, you know, for example, you look at Snoop, 
Yeah, in retrospect, Snoop would have made an extra, whatever, $100 million if he had stayed independent, mm -hmm. but he also could have just been a local rapper in Long Beach mm -hmm. and stayed that way forever. Right, right, right. You know what right, I mean? Right, to right, have right, yeah. Dr. Dre come in and say, okay, we're going to put you on the chronic. Right, 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 <laughs> then we're going to give you your own album. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. we're going to put Interscope and mm -hmm. Universal Records behind it. Says a whole lot because, you know, in hip hop, it's not always about skill level. Mm -hmm. You know, the best rappers in the world are probably working at UPS right now. Right, right, right. Exactly. You know, exactly. freestyling in the bathroom, right. you That's know right. what I mean, with their friends. That's Whereas, right. yeah, you know, I mean, and a major label potentially could give you a better chance of actually becoming known mm -hmm. and having a career forever, even mm -hmm. after you're not at the label anymore in terms of like the songs that they help push yeah, and everything yeah, else yeah. like that. Black TV used to be at Universal Records. You mm -hmm. know, we used to be part of SRC. And I've, I've seen it happen. Right. You know, a, a, a major label, someone over there, could make one phone call and put your shit on a hundred radio stations right. with one phone call. Right. You've never had radio hits. Right. You know what I'm saying? You've had songs that people fuck with, mm -hmm. but that's sort of the, yeah, you can get the radio hit and you could tour more and you know, whatever, but you'll make way less money. They'll pretty right. much take all your money. You'll just get the tour money. And or you could stay independent right. and make all the money, but not be as popular and not right. get as many tours and so forth. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a balancing act. Right. Make sure you uh, break down to them too what a radio hit is. Mm -hmm. Because at one point in time, it's like, oh, this is be good for the radio. It's like nowadays, there is no such thing as a radio hit. If they put the money behind it, it's a radio hit. If they have to if they have to play this song, they've been paid to play this song Correct. X amount of times a week, everybody at home is going to say, it's a hit, radio hit. Right, you keep hearing it over exactly, and over Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Or you know how sometimes we hear on the radio, like, I, I hate this song, it's annoying. Next thing you know, we're singing it. Yep. How the fuck? Why am I saying? Because it's been forced on you. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't know at home. They think songs are getting played on the radio because it's such a hit. It's like, no, it's been paid by the label to be played X amount of times. It's being pushed because they're trying to blow the song up. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, it's not about, oh, I'm looking for the next hot thing to spend. Oh, they're just doing their job at the radio station. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I agree. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think radio hits means, oh, he don't know how to come up with hooks because he's just raps and remixes and straight through and just demolishes the beat. So he don't make, you know, and it's like, no, I got plenty of songs. I've sat down with plenty of labels. They're like, oh, we want to use Ice Cream Truck. Oh, we want to use this song Lambo. Oh, we want to use this song Dipping Sauce. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we want to use this like, and they could have easily been blown up hits. I sat down with 300 Entertainment the same exact day Fetty Wap sat, that, sat down with 300 Entertainment. Mm. And they was like, Ice Cream Truck had like a couple million views or whatever. And they was like, hey, have you heard of this song called, uh, this dude named Fetty Wap, he got a song called Track, um, Trap Queen. And I'm like, no, nah. they like, you should check it out. It's good. It just hit a million views. I'm like, oh, a million views is a lot at the time. You know, so I'm like, oh, I check it out when I leave here, you know? So I went and watched it when, when, when I left. And I'm like, his song got a million views, but it's been out for two years. Oh, Trap Queen was, Trap Queen, was out for two years for two by the time, time, time it hit a million views. And I'm like, Ice Cream Truck just came out this month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It already got two million views. So I'm like, I, I didn't sign with them. He signed with them. By March, I believe March, Trap Queen was the number one song in the, in the country. Yep. You know, that's the power of, of a, a record label. 300, yeah. So even if that, people can say, you know, people thinking they know what the meaning of record, I mean, a uh, radio hit. And it's like that easy. I could have been signed and had Ice Cream Truck is the number one, you know, song in the in the country because he signed his deal. Or my Rap God album was just number one rap album on iTunes. And if I would have signed a deal a week prior, it would have been like he had to sign that deal to get to number one, though. You know what I'm saying? And it's like even if they didn't even move a finger to promote it, it was just what it looked like. He had to sell his soul to get to number one. You know what I'm saying? This shit like, and it's just the the people that looking on the outside. I hear people hate on Fetty even now, saying things like, "Oh, he fell off. He fell off." And it's like, do you mean he fell off? As in, he doesn't make good music anymore? Because he still makes that quality type of music. But if a record label is no longer pushing you, or they got you on the shelf and they pushing somebody else, then that's that's the reason why you're not hearing him no more. So are you talking about fell off because you don't hear him no more? Or you talking about fell off because his talent died down, you know? And the people, a lot of people, don't understand that when they get the bash and the talk, and it's like, what are we talking about here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, Fetty is hard to say what happened. Um, you know, that first album was was a classic. Mm -hmm. Like it had like like three or four big hits on it. Right, right, right. And um, I think with Fetty, I think he just got caught up with the lifestyle. Right, right. You right. know, he was throwing money away. I think he mm -hmm. bought like 
20 or 30 cars right, right, right around right. him. He was throwing thousands right, of dollars right, right, out right. of a balcony. He had 38 kids. Right, you right, know right. what I mean? So, you know, with a bunch of drama to go right, with it. Right, and, right. Um, you know, when you have that label behind you mm-hmm. kind of padding everything around you where you're still cool for a while Mm -hmm. before you know it you realize yo a bunch of years have passed i got all this child support Mm -hmm. i haven't had a record that's moved in four five six years and the bills are adding up and Mm -hmm. you know i don't know what his current situation is but he's facing like almost life in prison for allegedly dabbling back in the streets i don't know if it's true or not you know maybe everything will get dropped but you know but you see this type of thing happen where people try to maintain a lifestyle that they haven't been able to maintain. Is he free right now? I think he is free, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I think he's free right now. Shout out um, my boy Fetty, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm yeah, a fan. Me too, man. So 2017, you dropped your third album, Don't Doubt the God. Mm-hmm. Um, you also dropped No Surrender, No Retreat. Yeah. Uh, with a uh, group Fly, album. Fly Guy. FG, Fly yeah. Guy, uh, you know. Fly Guy Entertainment, in. yeah. Um, but that same year, you accused 21 Savage of stealing your lyrics yeah it was like a couple lines like okay. it was probably like more than a couple but it was like y'all have y'all have to go listen to it yourself but it was the and then that song was number one in the country which song was it him and post malone the rock star or something like that oh okay yeah so i'm just like that was crazy and it's like i, I it was laughable to me you know what i'm saying but it's like still like that that verse doesn't even define me I, I those are lyrics i put on a remix to What's the Ray Schremer, uh song they had? The uh, Black Beatles. Black Beatles, yeah. Yeah, the Black Beatles, you know? So it's like, it's not like he took something from our, uh, you know, an original song of mine. You know what I'm saying? These are just some bars I threw on the remix, you know? But it was like the same delivery and, you know, it was probably like four or five lines. Like, damn, not, you know, some people would be like, hey, that was one, you said that one, but it was like to have four or five of them, it's like, that was just like crazy to me. But yeah, that that was definitely a fact. Okay. Yeah. Did he ever respond? Uh, if he did, I didn't catch it. But yeah, but I don't got nothing against him or, no, or, or nothing like that. You know, it is what it is. Hey, man. Yeah. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then, uh, 2018, uh, your fourth album, "Pray for the Devil." Yeah. Got released. Uh, and also, uh, you dropped another album, "A Gun in the Teacher's Desk." Yeah. Same year. Yeah. Uh, what happened at IHOP that year? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> Going all the way back to 2015, it was this uh, dude from Peoria, and he was like real reckless, like under my comments, like you know, you know, older people have Facebooks too, like grandparents uh-huh. and things like that. And it was a post or something. I, was, I said something about you know my grandma posted on it. I posted some back, and then he got on there like just reckless. And said it's like I never seen this kid in my life. I don't know him, nothing. You know, from nowhere, and it's like I'm I'm not the type of person to argue or anything like that over social media. Like I'd rather see you when I see you and we'll take care of it then, you know. So and I'm just looking like the fact that I didn't say nothing back to him, I'm hoping my grandma isn't reading this thinking that <laughs> I let somebody talk to me crazy and didn't say nothing back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cause I'm just waiting, like, I wonder if she's gonna call me, like, hey, did you see this? You know, like this disturbed her type stuff. But she never said nothing, you know. But the dude said something like, I I I, I dare you to uh, bring your ass back to Peoria. Something, 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 you know? So I'm looking like, I was just in Peoria. You know, it was like, hmm. all right, whatever. So, you know, he's on picture comments, all type of stuff. Just like, he's trying to be hard to be seen. You know what I'm saying? And usually when somebody talks stuff, you know, dissing on the internet, it's usually stuff like, um, man, I heard you're not really from Chicago or, you know, he not a real nigga. You know, I don't believe that. Y'all don't believe what he's talking about in his rap. You know, something along those lines. Not never anything about, oh, when I see you or I'm going to do this. To, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that, like threatening no type of shit. So I just made a promise to myself. Like, I'm like, man, when I if I ever see this dude, like, I'm not going to try to, like, knock him out. I'm just going to, like, really break him. Like, really, hurt, like, hurt him. You know what I'm saying? And, um, like, bad. You know, so... Um, I end up seeing him, like wait, you recognize him at IHOP. I recognize him working at IHOP, trying to be low key. Like wait, 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 wait. He was an employee at IHOP. He was an employee at IHOP. Yeah, <laughs> All right, but he tried okay. to be low key, like because I went somewhere to eat to where I didn't, wouldn't expect. 
to see anybody that I know. Or Wait, so you walk in IHOP like and you actually recognize a dude that left a comment on your Facebook page? I, I walked in IHOP and seen him working well, there. I mean, when you, did you go to his Facebook page and saw that he had worked at IHOP previously? No, 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 no. no so no, this no, is no. just total surprise. Yeah, yeah, like he probably just started working there or something like that. some pancakes you know? and suddenly you're like, wait and a minute. Like, uh, and I was looking, I ordered my food and I'm just look, <laughs> And I seen like the back of his head like going in the kitchen. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's the dude. So it's like, now I probably shouldn't eat here. Right. You know what I'm saying? He might spit in your food. Right. So then I'm like, okay, I see older guy back there working. Oh, so I'm like, no, I'm going to stay and eat the food. And we got a picture in that. Oh, yeah. Montana scene. I won. And he ran out of here and left. It's like, no, I'm going to stay. I'm going to eat this food. And just in case he's spinning or not, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. So it's like, uh, okay, so that went that way. And it's just like, I'm like I'm not a bully or nothing like that. you know. So I give people a chance to like be the same person you was over the internet in my face. Uh -huh. And it's always the utmost respect when I see somebody, you know? And, but this dude, I guess, cause his coworkers was around, it's like another black lady in there and, you know, other white people. I don't know, I guess. But I asked him about it, you know, I'm like, yo, ain't you the dude from the end? He's like, oh, you to my face? Yeah, cause it's three years ago, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So he, I'm like, uh, you know, what was, you know, and he like, uh, uh, he like, uh, niggas just be feel like you be, uh, you know, sneak this in this. I said, niggas from Peoria feel like I'm sneak. That's what he said, niggas from Peoria feel like. I said, because I said shorties in Peoria are trying to be like shorties in Chicago. He said, not all shorties. You know, like with his hands out like this. So it's like, I'm not even finna sit here or, or prove my point because I have no love for you already. As it is. I said, fam, I said, how about just keep my fucking name out your mouth? And then he said, he kind of like, Turn to like like almost walk away from me. So I took a big step over to the side back in his vision. I said, how about that? And then he put down his keys on the table. So there's nothing else for us to talk about. So that's when I rocked him. Boom, he fell over into the booth. He's a little bit taller than me. Fell over into the booth. So I'm like standing by the booth, but his feet is like by my thighs. Like if he was to <laughs> kick my knee or so, anything like, you know what I'm saying? So I reached over and pulled him back out of the booth to his hand, to his back to his feet. You know, that's when I had him against the wall. That's when the, the video starts. Or whatever. But I ended up going to jail for that shit. <laughs> you got arrested. Yeah, I got arrested. Well, I guess IHOP's going to call the police. Yeah, yeah, As they should, right? You the know, fight is breaking out of the and, restaurant, um, right? Yeah, but um, but yeah, you know, that, that was that. Was that. Um, okay, so, so you got arrested. Did he press charges? Um, at first he didn't, and then he, he began. So I guess people was in his ear like, man, you can get a bag. That's Montana 300, blah, 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 blah. So he started trying to press charges, and then... Um, uh, it didn't end up going through because he ended up getting arrested with a whole bunch of other guys in the Rico case. He posted snitched on all his homies. Wait, 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 what? Some other stuff, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so man. this guy was actually like yeah, yeah, yeah. trapping on the side and working yeah, at IHOP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Wait, hold, hold on. How, how are you gonna be selling drugs and working at IHOP? Yeah. That's what, what I said. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if he a GD or something. I forgot what gang he posted. And I was like, I made a post. I said, dude, do gangsters press charges? You know, and then motherfuckers in the comments like, never, ever do they press charges, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, they served me some papers, said this man was suing me for a one-on-one -on -one fight. Okay. And what what happened after the lawsuit? Uh, it got dropped because um he ended up going to jail. He went to, going to the penitentiary for that Rico shit. And it's just like, that was that. he can't come to court no okay. more for, you know. And, and they're not finna take him out of prison to come oh, see me for, right. a, you know. So yeah. when you got arrested... I mean, did you just plead out to like a misdemeanor or something? Or uh, I went to I got arrested. It was like a f Friday or a Saturday, or something. But all I don't know is I'm you know you see the judge on Monday type stuff. Judge didn't come in on Monday, so I had to wait till Tuesday. So I got out. Then I had to. Um, but yeah, I played guilty, you know, <laughs> to the shit. So but, just a misdemeanor, right? Yeah. So no, just no, I had nothing, nothing, nothing major. The, the biggest thing would have been worried would have been the lawsuit, but. Thank God. Yeah. He was a he had some other bullshit going on. Well, shout out to you to having a, a memory to remember someone hating on you from three Somebody years ago on the internet. Because I'd be damned. It was just I a promise remember. that I made to myself. I promise I'm not finna, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna keep this same keep nah, the same I like... When I see him, I'm gonna crush his ass. Well, uh, that same year, didn't you start a GoFundMe over a freestyle? Yeah, I did a cause every, I was working on was it Pray for the Devil? Either Pray for the Devil or Gun and Teacher's Death. I was working on wrapping it up and it was like, this is the most I ever got flooded for a, a remix, um, to do a remix, you know? And I'm like, I'm not finna stop working on my, you know, trying to wrap up my album for this. So it's like comments everywhere, stuff that don't got nothing to do with the remix, nothing like they in the comment box everywhere. So I was like, um, 
I was like, okay, for me to stop working on my album and do this remix for y'all, you know, when I do a remix, I'm usually like four, five minutes or just straight, you know what I'm saying? Product that could actually be used for my album, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, that's for me to profit off of. So I was like, um, I didn't know no other way or no, um, what should I say, uh, platform to really show where if y'all pay this money that to show where your money is and like in a way to where it's like, you know, I could have been like, okay, I got the $15,000, but y'all don't know it. I can say I don't got it yet. You know what I'm saying? But I knew GoFundMe would show uh-huh. where the money is. You know what I'm saying? So to be fair with people, I was like, I'm going to just do it through GoFundMe, you know? And I think I'm, I forgot how much money I made. The whole, the whole 15 didn't go, uh, but I made a lot of money off of there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, because um, I mean, at the time, you know, I'm looking at uh, some articles because we mm-hmm. did some posts right. around it. It said that you raised six hundred dollars, or is it more than that? No, I raised way more than that. Way more than that. Yeah, way more than okay, that. Okay, but so somebody has donated just a thousand for one person. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you have to hit the fifteen in order for it to go through, or else everyone gets their yeah. money back? No, or no, 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 no. And uh, I've never I said, done a GoFundMe. No, it so, don't go. So you like tell it. me. That's the only one I did ever did. Yeah. But that was the only way I could show to them fairly where your money is. You know okay. what I'm saying? It's like you know, I might be like, oh, it's a charity. We're trying to raise this. It's like. Then why are you you trying to raise fifteen thousand dollars? Why are you sitting over there with one hundred thirty thousand? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Certain things like that. So I was like, you know, if we hit the fifteen thousand, then uh, then I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? And um, and then of course you got Chicago rappers hating. Oh, he's well, hating. And, uh, uh, I mean, he's he's going broke and he needs to go for. He needs this. It's like, dude, like. And then you know, I had certain motherfuckers and shit like, bro, you should shoot you should show him one of your bank accounts. You should. I'm like. Bro, the people don't move me, you know. Well, G Herbo made a comment. that way. Yeah, I seen G him too. G Herbo made a video. Too. He's like, oh man, you got rappers out here opening GoFundMe some uh-huh. shit for who running shit. Yeah, fuck, you know, folk. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, what the fuck is going on? And yeah. then my brother, who's a fan of him too, was like, you know, he like, man, I, it just made me look like. He said, if, if another rapper did that, he wouldn't have made that video. Hmm. You know, like what he got against you. Cause my my brother fuck with her people, you know what I'm saying? Heavy, and it was just like, damn, like, you know, cause he's a fan of her, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, I just look at like I knew, like I think I said in my track trap queen remix, you know, I say even haters talking shit was all a part of my vision, and it's like, dude, you can't be great and expect everybody to like you or nobody to speak out against you or you know not like what you're doing or feel like. So even when I see people comment or I see people react to videos. And they do this compliment that's kind of like, it's something about this compliment. But they Backhanded say, compliment. They say this. They say, yeah. whoo, this boy is a problem. So some people be like, um, like, you know, this dude is a problem. You know, and it's like, and like that's the reality for some people. Like they're looking at me like, this dude is a problem. Why am I a problem? You know, somebody could be, these niggas taking, this niggas taking away some of my shine or hogging, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know if, like literally, I I I I mess with every Chicago rapper. Period. You know, people that then diss me. You know, any any. You know, from the I didn't heard Dirk talk down, Herb talk down, any of them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I have no animosity against that. I want I want to kill you. I want to whoa a four pop. You no know, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I look at like I said, I'm older than them, and they may not see life now like how I see it. I can't expect everybody to see life on the scale that I do see it on. So somebody asked me about. Um, who did they ask him about? Another rapper. I don't even care to say his name. Um, but I, I say that's I say that's my brother. I say he just don't know, he just don't know it yet. Hmm. You know, I say I love him. You know what I'm saying? And it's like people that don't respect you today might respect you tomorrow or later on down the road. People that don't appreciate you today might appreciate you later on down the road. You know, and it's like then when you sit back and look at these cars like that, this this nigga was actually teaching. This nigga was actually talking wisdom. This nigga was actually sharing knowledge. And me at this age didn't appreciate him or didn't like him or was hating on him, blah, 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 blah. But once I get to this age, but if I kill you right now, you'll never get to mature or get to that age. It was like, what am I killing my brother for when he said he ain't the best rapper to me? What am I going to kill my brother for when he said, oh, niggas making go fun me now? Like, I want to shoot him because of that? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know... Some people are just going to, um, you know, they can't, if they can't say you can't rap, it's like, what can I say? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day also, like, as someone who's been in the industry now for 20 years, 
it's always interesting when people kind of push the envelope a bit and mm -hmm. they usually get ridiculed. Because I remember mm -hmm. when Nipsey dropped a hundred dollar album, mm -hmm. everyone laughed at him. Right. I, I remember that. I right. mean, now everyone's like, oh, we miss Nipsey and mm -hmm. Nipsey was perfect. Like, mm -hmm. nah, like, like rewind to what happened back then. Right. When he announced that he's releasing an album, a limited edition album for a hundred dollars each. Mm -hmm. People on the radio were like, I ain't no one buying a hundred dollars CD, mm -hmm. like whatever. But ultimately, he sold out of that project. Jay-Z bought like 20 copies yeah. himself. And then he re-released it publicly. <laughs> so right. he made even more money off of it. Right. And now it's almost like the norm for people to do certain little mm -hmm. merch packs and, and that's and the stuff thing. Like it's that. like you got to be able to take risks mm -hmm. in this world, you know, in this game. It's like, you know, right. because if I did it and then it worked, then the next person is going to do it. Oh, shit, this worked for him. Ooh, it's yeah. like, you know, so that's, that's a lot of people. It's like, oh. I'm gonna say this about it and I hope he don't make it. Or I hope he don't do this. Or I hope he don't. Oh, it's like, damn, when he do it, it's like, damn, that nigga really did that shit. That nigga really pulled that off. Well, 2019, you dropped your sixth album, Views from the General's Helmet. Mm -hmm. And is that when you started calling, calling yourself Rap God? No, no, no. I started calling myself Rap God right after Chirac dropped. Which was what 2014. Year? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, but. At what point did other rappers really start to respond to the whole rap god thing and so forth? I feel like that came later on. Yeah, I think, um, I don't even think people really responded to the rap god thing. I think people more so responded to me saying I'm the best rapper or something, or people saying I'm the best out of Chicago. Best rapper in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. That came 2020, I think, when you said that? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 2020. Okay. And, um... Yeah, and that was because I gave my opinion on who I think the best is out of Chicago now, like as of recent years, like this generation. And, and who, it was who some, would that be? It was some people like Polo G, okay, um, Young Pappy, like them was the one I, was, mm. you know, the the most powerful. I fuck with Pappy super hard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, you know, I spoke on them too, like them the two that stood out the most to me. I feel like they really been working on their craft, and you know, I respect their mind as a as a lyricist, you know, and um. And it was just people that just, uh, yeah, you know, you feel disrespected. He didn't mention your name. Like, if I got a fucking top five, how am I going to mention all y'all names in Chicago? Like, and it's not, you got your top five. I don't got a problem with who the fuck is in your top five, whether I'm in it or not. But it's some people that's like, they already don't like you. So it's like, oh, here's a here's a way I can step in. Or I can step in and say this right here. You know, you got people, like I seen the, um, the uh, post of a, uh, Albert Einstein, when he writes on the chalkboard, nine times one equals nine, nine times two equals 18, all the way to nine times 10. And when he gets to nine times 10, it says nine times 10 equals 91. Mm -hmm. He said all the uh, students laughed at him and ridiculed him about it, and he waited till they got quiet. And he said, y'all didn't say nothing about the success of my first nine answers, but you pointed out my one mistake that I made on the 10th, you know, and you ridiculed me about it and laughed, you know? He said, that's how the society is. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're looking for that one mess up or one thing to make you look like you're not perfect so they could, you know, be happy about it and celebrate about it and, and point it out to everybody. Hey, look, y'all, he's not as great as we, you know, as y'all thought he was, or blah, 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 blah. He's not better than me because even I knew nine times 10 is 90. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's the world that we live in. Once you understand that hate or people down talking, you wouldn't bother you so much. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just everybody's not going to agree with you. Everybody's not always, you know, so you can't be tiptoeing, running, walking around on eggshells because you're trying to get everybody to like you. That's fucking possible. All right, because I think last year you said something like, uh, whoever writing for Cardi B would be listening to me real closely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard a couple of lines um, from the, you know, the Chirac song that blew me up. Uh, you know, I whack a bitch, walk away with blood on my shoes, that's red bottoms. Then she blew up with the song, uh, some red bottoms that's them bloody shoes and it's like okay and I like it you know what I'm saying but I see where it's you know what I'm saying it's the same punch you know what I'm saying same metaphor and then I think the other line was um, uh, I forgot their line but I said something about um, something about cat dog you a pussy and a bitch something about cat dog some shit I forgot the delivery but um, oh uh, and you a track star uh, 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 uh. You a pussy and a bitch, nigga, cat dog. That's what I, that was the line. But they did some shit like that. Um, the wordplay, but it was like it was the same delivery, but it was like a different character. You know what I'm saying? It's like that was dope. So it's like whoever they listen to me closely, I said that. But it's like it was not no hate. I fuck with Cardi. We both follow each other on the gram, stuff like that. But you know, I just I pay attention 
to detail when writing and being artistic and the craft and different maneuvers and formats and things like that. So I just, I see, I see it in there. Yeah. I mean, but as content creators, I remember me and Too Short had a conversation about this uh, Mm -hmm. on camera. It's like you, you come up with the shit and you put it out there Mm -hmm. and you kind of expect people to fuck with it if Mm -hmm. it's dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. look at how many people bit Too Short from the biatch to, you know, his whole cadence to the whole pimp thing and everything. Like so many people have taken the Vlad TV blueprint and Mm -hmm. ran with it and Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to take it today. No, you know, you know what I mean, but but like similar, like the right. same font, the same interview style, like the same intros, right, like. Right. But it's like, yo, it's cool, man. We put mm-hmm. it out Let me be the for the world player, to right. fuck with it, exactly. and if they fuck with it, great. Right. I'll come up with some new shit. Right. You know. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the, the reality of it. You know, you come up with dope shit, and other people will gravitate towards right, it. Right. You know what I mean? You know, since our last interview, there's been a lot of tragedy in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh. You know, there's always, you know, you always hear about, you know, this many deaths this weekend, 4th of July is broke a record and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of really prominent rappers died since our last interview. I mean, of course you have King Von, Mm -hmm. FBG Duck, uh, E-Day, and, uh, you know, Mm D-Thing, Lil Dirk's brother. You know, when you start seeing, I mean, number one, did you have relationships with any of those guys I mentioned? With Duck. With Duck. Me and Duck was cool, yeah. Yeah. That that was the toughest one for me mm-hmm. because, well, I interviewed E-Day as well, but me and Duck had two interviews. Mm-hmm. And we kind of, I went into really, in both interviews, I really felt like I, I went hard with like, you know, like you should really move. Right, like it's I really, saw that part, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you have too much tragedy happening around you. Mm-hmm. Your your brother got killed mm-hmm. violently. You, you've been, you've been shot multiple times mm-hmm. and you've been stabbed and, you know, you're having a lot of death around you mm-hmm. and so forth. And it's like, and he would argue with me and be like, nah, but I know how to move. And now nah, I'm right. not, I don't like to go other places and so forth. And then he gets killed in broad daylight, you know, on the Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guys who killed him allegedly have all been, uh, you know, arrested recently. Mm-hmm. And it's all like a bunch of old black dudes right, and right. so forth. The first time you get shot, you stay in Chicago. Mm-hmm. The second time you get shot, you're still in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So you talk about how, you know, how much you value your life and how, how careful you are and how you know people want to hurt you, but yet you're still in the same area where these shootings are happening. Like, nah, why, why see, not move? See, see, what it was, I went in the same area. It, like I said, you put yourself in somewhere you don't want to be, then you got to be ready for what's coming. You feel me? I was just in the wrong place. I wasn't supposed to be there. And I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. You feel me? But the second time I got shot, I, I, I was leaving the liquor store. You know, motherfucker followed me. I ain't see it coming. You feel me? Motherfucker got up on me. I'm just glad they ain't killed me. You feel me? Motherfucker shot me in the leg. Hey, went to the hospital, got it wrapped up, went to the party. Okay, but it's still Chicago both times, right? Yeah, it's still in Chicago both times. Okay, so so what I'm saying is, you see a lot of a lot of Chicago artists who just leave Chicago. You know, um, you know, you see you see Chief Keef. He live in Calabasas, around where I live. You don't you don't see Chief Keef back in Chicago anymore. I, I don't remember the last time I've heard of Chief Keef in Chicago. Uh, you know, Dirk I think moved to Atlanta. Um, you know, was it King Yellow? I think moved to what was it Vegas or something like. You see, you know, Bibby and Herb, I don't think that they really stay in Chicago all that often anymore either. Like, mm-hmm. why, why stay in Chicago when these types of shootings are happening? See, what it is with me, like, I got more in Chicago probably than they got more in Chicago. Like, it's shit that I got to make sure I take care of here first before I do anything, like, you feel me, like, and plus, I ain't, I ain't the type of motherfucker that want to go move to another city, cause I don't, I don't trust nobody. You feel me? I don't trust new people. I don't want to hang around new people. I don't want no new friends, cause I don't trust nobody. Yeah, motherfucker could turn fake on you anywhere. You can die anywhere. You can get shot anywhere. You feel me? But it's just like in Chicago. I know better. You feel me? Like I know what to do and what don't to do and what not to do, you feel me? And it's like, now how I move around, shit. 
I'm safe. You feel me? I ain't gonna say too much, but you know what I'm saying. I'm groovy, and plus, like you just said, I ain't gonna put my boy Yella in their predicament. But everybody besides Yella, like them niggas, is real rappers. You feel me? Like them niggas scared. It ain't cause they got money and move. Um, how close were you to Duck? Um, I wouldn't say super close, but we had the same energy. You know, every time we would talk, you know, and, re and reach out to each other. You know, it was always good energy. Sometimes in this industry, that's not the case. Yeah. You know, like I can meet you today, and it's like all oh, this mm -hmm. energy, and it's like I might meet you again two years later, and it's like. You act, you seem like you didn't remember that we <laughs> met before. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't right. I didn't seen that type of stuff. You know, even not even just from rappers, even from people like just interviewing like me and you type stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Videographers, everything, you know. And um and you know, sometimes people uh they want to deal with the more popping person. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's like I already don't have a record label behind me. So it's like, you know, but once the world is like, oh, he's the biggest thing in the world, it's like, oh, Hey Montana, yeah, remember me? Yeah, I remember you. You know what I'm saying? Same energy. Now, now the energy is back different again. You know what I'm saying? There's some people that think you don't catch that or remember that. You know what I'm saying? I remember everything. Like I, I'm always have a sober mind, sober mind, and I remember a lot. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, me and Duck was super cool. We were supposed to um do some music together. We just never got around to it, and um, and I'm just mad really that we did really took so long to do it because when I would talk to him, he I think he actually listened to me. Mm -hmm. Like not music wise, but what I had like, oh, I, I, I feel you, big bro. You know what I'm saying? So like, you were oh, telling him the same thing, like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You get up out I, of there. I necessarily, I'm not necessarily told him to leave there, but it was just like life things, you know, or what to watch out for, or just you know how to watch people, and just you know, just kind of stuff you you would share with your with your brother who's out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause he's out yeah. here. He's out here. It yeah. was, I wasn't saying, "Hey, get the hell out of here," but it's like, "Hey." I, I was saying, this, "Get the hell know? out of there." Yeah, and you know, you're not wrong for saying. You're not I, wrong I for saying. I interviewed his mom like right, right after his death, just right. to show, like, yo, like for everyone out there who who doesn't, you know, who feels like, you know, fuck it, I don't give a shit, I'm gonna do whatever. Right. Like, realize this is what's gonna happen after you're gone. This is how your mother's gonna feel right, right. here. This crying. That's why I made camera. this song, Homecoming King. I'm Great like, song, by the way. That's my yeah. favorite song on the Thanks, album. man. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. that. But yeah, I, I feel like every street dude, you know, or, you know, you feel like you got a son that might possibly get into the street life once upon a time where y'all living in that type of neighborhood, like they need to hear that. You know, even dudes that's in jail that might be coming home soon, like they they might need to hear that. You know, they do need to hear that, you know. So, um, yeah, if, if you ain't heard it, man, check out Homecoming King. We all get a chance. Which takes us to, I guess, your final album. Mm -hmm. The Rap God album. Right. 25 songs. Yeah. Is it really your last album? My last solo album. Really? Yeah, my last solo I, album. I I'm going to do I, joint. Because everybody has said they're done. How many Jay-Z have a last right, right, solo exactly. album? Exactly. Seriously, the Black album was Black supposed album. to be the last album. That came out like 15 years ago or something. Yeah, that it was my, like five that was my, albums since then. That was, my, that was my joint, man. It was too. Yeah, it was everyone's joint. Yeah. Because it was his last album. Get that. How many albums have come out since then? Yeah, that was, that was, that was tough. Uh, so like I said, I don't fully believe you, but but... From your point of view, why is this your last album? Um, I've been wanted, like, I think in, like, 2016, right after uh, Fire in the Church dropped, I had, like, named, like, my next four or five albums. And I was like, you know, my last one will be called The Rap God. So mm -hmm. it's been a vision for me. You know, like, I was making this the conclusion. You know, always already in my head. It's not, like, something I came up with as soon as I started working on it. You know what I'm saying? So, um... So I already had the title before I even had the titles of the albums that was in between there, like the Pray for the Devil, the Gun and Teacher's Death, all of that stuff. And um, and Rap God was originally supposed to drop in 2020, and that's when I was going to be done, you know. But the COVID happened, and then I'm facing jail time, stuff like that. Not wanting to be locked up while my album is dropping or, or out, and I can't reap the benefits of touring and doing shows off of it while the music is hot. Stuff what like happened that. in 2020? Um, COVID happened and we couldn't move well, around. No, you we know, were lockdown. Say, you say when you were, we were facing jail time, what, what yeah, happened with that? That was, um, I was driving through some little town called Eureka and they was trying to give me oh, that's driving a, suspended. That's yeah, a yeah. suspended license. Yeah, bullshit. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, that stuff, it just was a, a big waste of time, you know, and it kind of pushed things back. But, you know, they say all things happen for a reason. So maybe it was supposed to happen for my stuff to be number one rap album on iTunes, you know? Right. So this album comes out independently uh -huh. and becomes the number one album mm -hmm. on iTunes. Mm -hmm. Where was it on Billboard? 
I'm not even sure. I'm okay. not even sure. But still, yeah. the number one album on yeah. iTunes, yeah, 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 completely yeah. independent, yeah. top to bottom. Yeah. You paid for the whole thing yeah. out of your own pocket, yeah. all the production. The video shoots, studio Video time, shoots, the, the mixing, mastering, yeah, 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 all of the it. artwork. Yeah. yeah. All the stream money comes back to you yeah. uh, on all platforms. Yeah. Um, how did that feel to really put out an album like that? And let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I was wondering this actually, like driving up here when I was listening to the album. When you, when an album was when they calculate how many quote unquote copies mm-hmm. the album sold based mm-hmm. on the streams, if you have more songs on there, does that automatically? Like increase the streams and the number of copies sold, or I'm not sure. Actually, I was thinking about that too. Yeah, I was thinking about that too, because I know it's usually like if somebody buys a single song, you know, if they was to buy just single songs, twenty five at all, twenty five, it would be more than if they just bought the album as a whole. I would make more money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was wondering how that worked too, because now when people do it and it comes to their phone, it's like, damn, what if I want to buy ten copies? You know what I'm saying? Like, do I need to go to ten different phones? It's like they got to go to ten different phones to do that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I know times is changing and stuff like that, so we try to stay up to date. But yeah, I don't really even know the answer to that question. Okay. And you know, when you called yourself Rap God, mm-hmm. you know, there was an interview you did with BET mm-hmm. where you said, uh, I felt like the only person messing with me in rap is Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. At a point in time. Okay. Not anymore? No, no, not anymore. Okay. You feel like you're better than Lil Wayne at this yeah. point? Yeah. As you should. Yeah. I, I felt like, um, I remember like 2007, I'm like, the only person that's better than me is Wayne. You know, and I was like, then I remember like in like 2013, I was like, okay, I feel like me and him are like neck and neck, you know? And then after I did like Holy Ghost, like Chirac and Holy Ghost, I was like, okay, that's what, this was when I felt like I'm, I'm, I'm rap God is nothing. I'm the most high. Yeah. Okay. Once the album came out, what was, you know, aside from going number one, you know, on iTunes, what was the overall effect of that album? Um, it was it different than like, the other like projects? Like afterwards, or are you talking about Well, the just, just the effect of, of dropping. Because, you know, I mean, you know what it's right. like to drop a big project and drop a project that people are kind of right, right. Like, so with. Right, So to finally drop it felt like finally for me, too. Like, my fans was finally is here. You know, it's, please don't push it back, blah, 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 blah. You know, so it's finally for me, too. I, I couldn't wait to get this to y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, satisfy y'all. Like, to be like, you know, I'm, it's out and I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? So another feeling that I felt was like, you know how people say, uh, make it to the top? I'm trying to make it to the top, or I'm on top. It's like, we never really ask ourselves like, what is on top? Because what's on top to you might not be what's on top to the next person, you know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure when rappers rap about it, I'm on top, they are not talking about the top charts. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it was like, I could actually sit back and say like, wow, I really, made it to the top in a sense if that's you know the, the top number one the top charts without selling my soul you know what I'm saying like signing my rights over you know so it's like to say that it's like man I don't personally know anybody else that can say that you know what I'm saying and um, you know so it just felt good and it felt like it was worth you know standing firm you know what I'm saying and it's like it, it finally paid off almost you know for the sense it was like for years it's like Hey, you made it number two at least. You know what I'm saying? One time, but that's great. That's a great accomplishment, but it's only so much you could do as an independent artist, Montana. You know what I'm saying? Like, you probably can't, you know, do that again. You know what I'm saying? Or you can't be surprised if you're not able to get up that high again. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, just to know that, you know, I'm doing this stuff all off my lyrics. Mm-hmm. Like, not because. I'm in Louis and Gucci every time you see me. Hmm. Not because, you know, I got this beef going on with this dude over here. Not because I got this famous pop and dance going on right now. Not because, you know, I got such and such and such and such backing me and shouting me out and I be with them all the time on their page and blah, 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 blah. Like, or because, oh, I got this big homie that's like, it's like, it's like no, this is all my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? So to be able to stand firm and, and go number one off my lyrics and, you know, be relevant for this long off of what's coming out of my mouth and, and what's created in, in my brain, you know what I'm saying? And how I articulate myself and, you know, deliver it and stuff like that. It's like, man, it's it's kind of like, I just feel like I'm in a world of my own. Like, I often thank God a lot, like, for my brain and the way it works, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, when you say the word rap God, you know, the first thing that comes up is Eminem. 
mm-hmm. the song Rap mm-hmm. God in uh, 2013. Mm-hmm. And people made that uh, connection. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, I, I have fans like, you ain't the rap guy, this is the real rap guy, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, certain people like that. And uh, one time I said, I like, I listened to his rap guy song and um, and I'm like, he he never said he was a rap guy in his song. He didn't say that? No, he never said he Hold was a rap guy in his song. He said, I'm beginning to feel like I'm a rap guy. I'm the nigga okay. that he said he was starting to feel like. So if like you listen listen closely, that's what he says. You're right. I'm beginning to feel like a rap guy. Rap guy. You're right. Yeah. So you said beginning to feel. Right. Because I'm beginning. Yeah. He actually says it twice. Yeah. No. Wait. Three times. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's the chorus basically. Yep. 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 Aha. Okay. So he's just beginning to feel like a rap guy, but you feel like right. you're the actual rap guy. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I mean, the thing is about your projects is, is you know, you mentioned this. You don't have a bunch of big features and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You're not you don't have joint albums. No, no, no. You know, like I mean, I like Rich the Kid as a rapper, mm-hmm. but it seems like every project is like like a compilation, damn mm-hmm. near. Like every song has like two or three because features. That's, because it's that's a lot of people lean on that, like, hey, yeah, bring your fan base in, bring your fan base in, bring your fan, you know what I'm saying? And you guys I think it was Kodak, and I love him so much. I think he said, Yeah, hey, I did a I don't know if he was talking about Uzi or somebody, but he said somebody he like he said, I ain't I ain't like that song. I only did it, I only did a song with him because he said I don't even like his music. I only did a song with him because our labels made us do it. And I'm like, damn, he just said that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you yeah. gotta respect somebody's truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't like it or, or or agree with it, it's like, man, they just showed you who they are, you know? And you could determine if you wanna keep fucking with them after that mm-hmm. or go on about your business. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. And it was just like, damn, so to say that's like that's the that's gotta be the reality for a lot of other artists too, you know? And um and that's funny because when I hear that, it made me think about the uh the pictures with Herb and uh Lil Uzi Vert had together. And it kinda looked like Herb was kinda like, you know, <laughs> like this all the time. Like it was like like it's some weird vibes and shit. It was it was just it was funny though. Hold but on, um, let me look up this picture that you're talking about right here. Uh, it's like three pictures of something. Like that. I don't know. They was out somewhere playing video games or something somewhere, but it looked like it was like some my label got your my label and your label and got together or something. I don't know if they're on the same label or what, but yeah, it was just funny. I remember everybody leaving comments about it and talking about it. Like he looked like he didn't want to be there. Montana three hundred man, listen. Like what you've done, I think, is taken the hard road and the road less traveled mm-hmm. the whole time. Since day one, you could have signed the label. You could have gotten a feature from so and so. You could have gotten the co-sign. You mm-hmm. could have played politics. You you could have done a whole lot of shit to to speed things up for you. Right. But you chose to stay independent, take the long road, take the slow road. And like I said in the beginning, you know, of our interview, like I I can relate to that situation. Right. You know, what I mean, it may not look like. You know, you're the most popping dude or the richest dude, but once you pull back the covers and see what's really happening under the scenes, right? You know, you're the one that's actually winning. Exactly. You're the one that doesn't have a 360 deal. You you know, every stream goes back to you. You don't. I don't have to work my way out of debt. You don't have to work your way out out of you know a five hundred thousand dollar advance. Yeah, no, I mean it's interesting because like like recently, I, I was offered what was the equivalent of a publishing deal. Mm-hmm. You know, there's these companies that will basically pay you a certain amount of money for your YouTube revenue for a certain mm-hmm. number of years. Gotcha. Like a publishing deal. Right. And after going through this whole process for months and finally getting this big multi, multi-million dollar offer, mm-hmm. we ran the numbers and we were like, nah, we don't need this money. Right. We're not going to give up. It was like, we had to give up like 25% mm. of the total money in order to take this upfront money. Right. And, and, and me and the guy that were working on it, he used to be the head of the biggest publishing house in the world. I'm not going to say who it is. But I asked him, I said, how many musical artists that you've worked with that have turned down publishing deals? Mm. He said, zero. I not a, not a single, not a single one. Every time that a, the publishing deal, we start the process, a deal always gets worked out and they right. always sell their publishing. That's crazy because- You see what I'm saying? In 2015, or 16, I want to say 2015, I sat down with a dude and when I got in the car and left, he called my phone and said, hey, dude, I just want to tell you, out of everybody I ever offered a deal, you're the only person that ever told me no. Mm-hmm. And I said, and he said, 
And I just want to let you know that my respect for you just grew 10 times. Yeah. Every artist, the biggest producers, the biggest rappers, whatever, they all do these publishing deals not realizing that you'd be better off not doing the publishing deal. Right. They're giving you these deals because they're going to make 25, 30, 40, 50 percent mm -hmm. off you. One of the deals I got offered, they just take 2% off the top just for themselves, just to do it, just to close right. the deal. Right, uh -huh. 2% of millions of dollars is mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But my point in saying all this is that instead of taking all these little upfront deals, doing all these little things that mm -hmm. ultimately put you in debt and ultimately hurt your money in the long run, you've chosen not to do any of that. You just sat there, put out your projects, mm -hmm. collected your money, mm -hmm. did your shows, you know, worked with your homies, mm -hmm. put out group projects, yeah. did, didn't did take the, what I call the payday loan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because ultimately that's really what it is. Right. A lot of times these labels give you payday loans right. that you got to pay back with all types of hidden costs. Yeah. yeah. And after, you know, because I mean, you've been, how long have you been rapping now? Like how many years technically? Like rapping, like knowing I could rap? Like, like, like putting out projects. Oh, um... I put out my first mixtape in 2006, but I put out my first album in 2014. Okay, so, so 14, 22, so eight years. Mm -hmm. For eight years, you see what it's like by not taking the quick money, mm -hmm. by, by keeping your masters, mm -hmm. keeping your publishing, keeping your streams, mm -hmm. staying independent. And, and I bet you that you have way more money than a lot of these so-called popping rappers that people think are like rich as fuck. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got... um. This is this is something too. I got a lot of money that I haven't even touched yet. Like just off my publishing from my writing, everything I've ever wrote, hmm. I've never touched that money. Like ever, everything I, I've and then and I've been having people reach out to me for years saying, "Hey man, you know you got a you know you know you got a lot of and it's like yeah I know like some you know and it's and it's I still got so much shit in my holster and you know what I'm saying it's like. You know, but it's 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 gonna be dope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to it. I love to hear it, man. I love to hear it. I think you're sending a blueprint for you know generations to come right. in terms of what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I hope so, man. I think so. I think so. I truly believe so. Montana 300, man. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having Until me. Until next man. time. Peace, love it, man.